Hi everyone, this is Joan and I hope that you're having a wonderful and blessed day. The reason why I'm here, even though there's always so many things happening, it's impossible to totally keep up with them. Well, one of the people I have admired and I've read a few of his books is Dante Fortson. I think that he is a very, very interesting person and I, I like all the information that he provides. Now, this is the video that I was watching and the question is, again, this is Dante Fortson, and the question is, are there one or two creations in Genesis? Now, if you looked at my older videos it's hard to keep up with when i did or said something but i think it was about a year ago i was looking really hard at genesis one and two and i was saying that i truly don't see that those are the same creations and part of the reason why i was saying that was because of a translation by zachariah sitchin about now a lot of people have come back and said that they don't agree with this translation but i do know one thing and that he has translated it far better than i could so at the moment i'm listening to him because it wasn't the theory behind i think that they were totally against and i kind of believe that sometimes when the world is totally against against something maybe you need to investigate it because the world is being ruled by the evil one right now but in any case, part of the reason why I was questioning if one, if Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 are the same creation is because they just don't match up. When you look at the timelines involved, they just, they just simply don't match up. Now, um, that's in one area I don't agree with, uh, Mr. Fortson, but that doesn't really that doesn't mean I wouldn't listen to him or that I don't respect him. I don't believe any of us know everything that's going on and at some level we're all wrong. But I did, I did not manage to get on to watching him when he was actually broadcasting. I almost never do. And people will think that you're not paying their a comment section enough attention or something but some of us are watching it on tv yeah i watch youtube videos on my television so i can't comment at the time that it's done so that's why i don't really try very hard to actually see it when it's being recorded but in any case i do think that he has made a great contribution to knowledge and i have a respect for that now, when you look at his video, he's going to answer a lot of the questions, and I'm going to send this to him as a response, if he will allow it. I can understand if he won't, but like I said, about a year ago or so, I was very, I still am, very, very interested in this particular subject, because uh, there are the, there are scriptures that say that the devil was thrown out of heaven. Remember when Barack Obama was running, there was this person who was saying that his name means basically thrown out of heaven. So um, yeah, that has been interesting to me uh, that the devil and his angels were thrown out. Now, again, it was the devil and his angels. It wasn't the devil by himself. So let me tell you my theory. And I have made a video about this before, maybe a year or so ago, but I couldn't find it. So let me repeat myself. I think that what happened in the garden was the devil, I do believe in the pre-Adamic world. I believe that there were fallen angels who were cast out of heaven they were thrown or chased into the earth now i have said on many occasions in videos that when you go back and you read genesis it makes a point of telling you that there was gold in a certain land let me pull up genesis for you let me 
doesn't mind that because people get upset easily. Now, I'm not saying him, but people in general. Genesis 1, and it says at verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creepeth, creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Put emphasis on let us, let us make man in our image. And I think that us is not referring to the Most High and His Son, our Savior. I think that this is actually the devil and his lieutenants, his fallen angels saying this. So when you continue on to 27, it says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. How could one person make someone in their image who was both male and female? Now, in my opinion, that is why you have the emphasis on androgyny right now. I think it is because if you look into a certain occult, organizations or beliefs some of them will tell you that adam was made androgynous that he i hope i'm using the correct word that he was male and female and the bible is telling you that this right here in the first chapter that this god created man in his own image he created him what male and female so i think that's why you're having so much uh, legislation, so much entrance, interest and acceptance of cross-dressing of their, of people saying that they are non-binary because back, well, in some occult organizations, they have the belief that Adam was male and female. And if you look at Genesis 1, it tells you male and female. And it says, God created man in his own image. Well, the angels are not like us. I think that maybe they are male and female, but when they come to earth, they can decide or they can even change. They can be male one day and female the next. I had made a video before about a lot of the Indian gods, even if they look on the surface female, they are both. They can be one or the other. And I don't think it's just their gods. I think that probably this is a condition of a certain type of angels, specifically the angels that fail. Now, there are, of course, we don't know all the information about them. But I do think that what well, told you that the way things were will be the way things will be. So I think that people overlook this where it says created in his own image well if you truly believe god is male then how is he creating a female in his own image i think that's because this is not god speaking and i think that you also have to look at the bible was inspired by god god didn't actually write it except for the ten commandments so when you see the capital g you make an assumption that the translators translated it correctly and that the creator God, the most high God, should be the only God with the capital G. I think that they made a lot of assumptions also and made this, which is not the most high God, which I really believe that this is probably the devil whatever name he was going by when he was cast out, I think that this is him. And he knew God's plans. So he got trapped here on the earth. He was chased out of heaven. They started a fight. They couldn't win. They got chased out. They came to earth and they decided. Now, this is based upon the work of Sitchin, his translation of the Sumerian text. Now, Sumeria, Sumerian Sumer means the same as Ur, you are. So the reason why I was willing to look into that was because I had always read about Abraham, how it kept repeating in the Bible that he was from the land of Ur. 
And I kept wondering, what is this land? Why do you keep telling me this? And I know, you know, the Bible doesn't tell you stuff for no reason. So I thought that that was important. So when I saw that someone had translated the Sumerian text, I really wanted to know what that was about. So when he translated that text, when he translated that text, he was giving you more details about the devil coming to this earth. And, you know, please, I apologize for the roughness in my voice. It is now, it seems to be a permanent feature. I used to have a very smooth voice, but now I, I don't know what happened. I guess I damaged something somewhere. But in any case, please bear with me. So one of the reasons, another reason why I thought that what Sitchin was saying was so interesting was because, and if any of you have listened to what I've been saying before, I had thought to myself, and I think it might be in chapter two, where it talked about the Garden of Eden and how the land in one place had a lot of gold. And I thought to myself, what do two naked people in a garden need with gold? Well, what they, someone, I can't remember who it was, said that, well, they needed the gold. Here it is, uh, 211. They needed the gold to fuel their instruments, to fuel their um, flying saucers or whatever they used so that they could leave. And where were they trying to leave from? Well, the earth was a trap for them. It had something called a firmament that they couldn't get through. They were trying. They needed the gold and they didn't like working. So whatever indigenous animals were already on the earth, they found a way to take the women that they had brought with them or the, like I said, it's hard to explain angels. It seems like they can come here and be whatever sex they want to be whenever they want to be it. Well, in any case, they used themselves or the female members or the ones who could be female. And they made it with the indigenous earth creatures and created something, some other kind of creature that was able to go into the mines and get gold for them and i think that this is what adam was he was not the same adam as in chapter two now when i was looking at dante or mr fortson his argument was that well adam like some people were saying that they were then there were, he was saying, and some other people too, that there were two atoms. And okay, if there were, how could there have been two atoms? And my answer to that is that Adam was not a name. Adam is a title. And I think it probably means like it's Ha uh, Adama. I think what it means is the man or the man creature. And I think when you look at, at um, again, when you go back to Genesis 126, it says, let us make man in our image. And it tells you that that image is both male and female. So it didn't just uh, belong to one person, even from that, um, just that one sentence is telling you that Adam is not a personal name, or at least if it is, it was a name that was given to Adam and Eve. So the name doesn't, it, it doesn't really mean that it can't have been the same person. Like his argument was that, well, it had to have been the same Adam in chapter one and chapter two because they're both named Adam. But in that case here, Eve was named Adam. So what I'm saying is, I think that it's not a name, it's a title. I think it means the domain. So, so I think um, that would have been chapter one, verse 27. It says, God created man in his own image. Man is Adam, Ha Adama, and 
here is telling you that they both go by the same title, male and female. So I think it's telling you really that this particular Adam was male and female, and he was made in the image of someone else or something else that was male and female. And I think that that was something that the Most High God did not create. And I think when you really look at just a regular human being, and I know that I have said this before in another video, most human beings would not give a child the, their whole kingdom. They wouldn't just say, hey, I just made you, but here, take my whole house, not just the house. You have dominion over everything. That, um, no, that does not make sense. I don't think that that is what, I don't think that this is talking about the Heavenly Father. It says, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowls of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. I don't think that God would give untrained people that he had just made. I don't think he would give them dominion. I don't think he did give them dominion. I think that this was the devil and his crew because he took one third of the angels with him when he came to earth. So you would have these people who would be looked upon as gods. They are fallen angels. They have made some other creature. Now right here is only telling you about one or possibly two, but when you look at it literally, it says male and female in his own image. So I think that Adam, in this particular place, the reason why it didn't say God created man and woman in his own image is because he was both, just like the God who created him. So I think that when it says, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, it's because the earth has already been destroyed before and he is telling them to go forth and just take over everything. Uh, the devil is basically saying, hey, I'm giving you everything, even though it doesn't belong to me. I'm going to give it to you anyway. He gave them every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth, every tree, um, every fruit that they see, every beast of the earth, every fowl of the air. Everything that creepeth upon earth, wherever there is life. I have given every green herb for me, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were six day. Now, this particular verse, I do think it's talking about God. And I think it is referring to the trap he has made for the devil. I think that this has been from the very beginning that the Savior chased the devil and his fallen angels to the earth. Maybe at that point, that's when the firmament was created so that they couldn't get off the earth. But they wouldn't know they couldn't get off the earth until they refueled and tried to leave. They needed the gold mentioned in chapter 2 to fuel their uh, vessels so that they could leave. Now, this is just, this is a theory. So, I'm not one to um, make fun of someone's theories. I know other people do it, but sometimes something that sounds totally outrageous can actually be correct. So, I think, listen with an open mind, but not open to the point that your brain falls out. So, these are just, this is just something to think about. Because right now, if you say something that everybody else doesn't agree to or, or hasn't been part of just general, general beliefs, the automatic assumption is that you are, you're totally incorrect. And the way the world is going, you're being told lies from day one. So, of course, someone saying something other than what you've been used to hearing sounds like either they've lost their mind or it's a foreign tongue but i think it takes like the savior i'm sorry like the heavenly father said search for me as for hidden treasures it is for god 
to hide things. It is for man. It is for kings to search it out. So I think in that case, kings can mean male or female. It's for anyone to search it out. If you have to search it out, that means it's not obvious. you got to look for it, and it may look crazy. So this is just something to consider, and you guys have a great rest of your day.